The uh, choir special we had this morning, I think would be rather interesting to take everybody down and go down to PBI for a blowout and then watch how crazy those people would go. I mean, throwing songbooks, throwing suit coats, running around the bases. You know, I can see pros of con e either side. From our side, you can sit there and actually listen and not be distracted by some fat guy running around <laughs> yelling and screaming, drawing attention to himself. But I can see that side too. So, I don't know, it's kind of, you know, try to analyze both sides and whatever. whatever. Okay, since we've been going through Daniel on uh, Thursday night, it'll be a quickie preview here, and then we'll get right into Hosea, the one that follows it. We've been going uh, just like a general overview as we're coming through the Old Testament, and let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I do ask you to help us to understand your words. I do pray that you'd help us to be faithful to your words and help us to desire your words. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Daniel. Okay, the book of Daniel got 12 chapters. It's a, it's a fulfillment of a mistake, a grave mistake that Hezekiah committed where Hezekiah allowed foreign ambassadors from Babylon or Iraq to see everything he owned, which uh, was like enticing them or advertising to them. And Isaiah told him, so if you would, in Isaiah 39, told him for the silly thing that he did, Isaiah 39, is that God was not pleased and God said, okay, you're going to lose it. Isaiah 39, verse 3. So this is the uh, foundation of Daniel. Isaiah 39, 3. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto king Hezekiah and said unto him, What said these men, and from whence came they unto thee? Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country unto me, even from Babylon. So that's about 700 miles from our mileage there. 700 miles about um, east of there. Then said he, What have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All that is in mine house have they seen. Dumb, dumb. Dumb for anybody to do. There's nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. Then said Isaiah to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee. Now sons is not limited to the first generation. Sons, grandsons, great-grandsons, great-great-grandsons. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Okay, so Daniel chapter 1, that's Daniel. Okay, so it was, very, it was a grave mistake that as a king he showed off his wealth. And you know, as far as our culture, we do have some privacy things, and... I do believe the ought to be as private as you possibly can, especially about your finances. If somebody asks you what, what you make, say it's none of your business. Okay, uh, that's private. That's personal. That's within the family. There are a lot of good things you should keep to yourself. You ever go to a grocery store and somebody's telling everything they've been doing last week? It's like, hello, shut up. Besides, who cares what you've been doing? You know, especially Facebook. I'm going to go to the kitchen. Okay, and so. Uh, I mean, we ought to try to keep things as private as you possibly can. And, but with Hezekiah, that was a grave mistake. And so he had a judgment pronounced against him that his sons, grandsons, great-grandsons are going to be taken captive to Babylon. So Daniel chapter 1, verse 3 is the fulfillment of it. Daniel 1, verse 3, The king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. Okay, and there's four names, verse 6, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So that's, um, that's the thing about Daniel. He, uh, unfortunately, when, pa when parents do right, children receive blessings from that. When parents do wrong, 
children receive problems with that. Okay, that's just a law of life. And so as an individual, as a parent, do the best you can so you can allow your children to have blessings. Okay, instead of everybody worrying about the children, no, I'm worrying about the children, and all that stuff. Okay, as parents, live so your children get blessings. So that's just a natural law of life. Uh, And so Daniel, as a great, great, great grandson, I don't know how many generations down he was. I didn't take time to look at it. Uh, He and the three fellas uh, were taken uh, captives to Iraq, so uh, carted about seven to 800 miles east of there, from, away from their homeland. Why, they were royal lineage. They were of the royal seed. So they went from a very cushy life to reality, find out what other people live like, and then they were indoctrinated for three, and, three years in a Babylonian culture. And of the 4,600 that were taken captive on three different installments, we know the names of five of them, Ezekiel, Daniel, and his three buddies. So uh, in history at the White Throne Judgment, we'll find out what happened to the other 4,000, you know, or so forth. 595. Now, why did, how, did Daniel, how did Daniel override or overcome this indoctrination of three years? Daniel 1, verse 8. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. He got some grit in his crawl. Okay, and so a lot of times you can take a Christian kid... And put him in a public school environment. And some of them are going to succumb to the temptations. And some of them, or a few of them, are going to overcome those temptations. What is going to be the determining factor? Their heart. You can take the you know, same thing, put them in a Christian school, put them in a homeschooling environment... Okay, through the years, I've seen good parents raise bad kids. I've seen bad parents have good kids. So uh, Cain and Abel came out of the same household. So it's all a matter of the heart. A person cannot use their circumstances as an excuse. Okay, God is not going to accept those things. So the book of Daniel is about that. Now, Daniel is a pretty wise uh, fella. A, uh, if you would, Ezekiel 28. I mean, he's, uh, there are some people in the Bible that the Lord uses for an example for patience, okay? So we know who's used as an example for patience? Okay, Job. Okay, there's two fellas that were used as an example for a prayer life. God says, I don't care if these two guys were in Jerusalem, I am not going to listen to their prayers about Jerusalem. And that's Moses and Samuel. Uh, then he said, uh, there's three fellas that I don't care if they lived in Jerusalem, their kids are not going to, uh, their kids are not going to survive the uh, um, Babylonians coming in. I don't care who their kids are. I mean, these three guys will survive, Noah, Job, and Daniel, but not their kids. So he'll use certain men as examples. Um, He used uh, a man to be a meek man. The meekest man on earth was Moses. Okay, for wisdom, the man that's used for wisdom is Ezekiel 28.3. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. So that's the one used for wisdom, Daniel. Obviously, we know also Solomon. So who is he talking to in verse 3? Thou art wiser than Daniel. Well, verse 2, it's uh, Lucifer. So pretty wise. So uh, Daniel, very simple. It's the Old Testament foundation for the New Testament revelation. Okay, in any of the Christian colleges, whenever they have like the elective in the Bible classes, revelation, almost always you have to have that preceded by Daniel. Okay, and that's, that's the good thing. They got that right. In Daniel chapter 2, he mentions four kingdoms, and then the, the next one is the Antichrist. In Daniel 7, he mentioned three kingdoms, and then a follow-up with the Antichrist. In Daniel 8, two kingdoms, and a follow-up is the Antichrist. 
In Daniel 9, one kingdom, then the follow-up is the Antichrist. In Daniel 11, you have the Antichrist. So he's going right down progressively. And Daniel reveals what's called the times of the Gentiles. If you would, look in Luke 21, verse 24. Uh, The book of Daniel uh, reveals the history between the, in during the silent years, from from, uh, Malachi to Matthew, much of Daniel is covering that history time, and it's called the times of the Gentiles. Daniel chapter, or Luke chapter 11, verse 24. Uh, This is a prophecy of the tribulation. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the, uh, I'm sorry, Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Okay, so Daniel 9.24, I think I went through that last week. Uh, Daniel 70 weeks, that's the Bible calendar for the first and second coming of Christ. Okay, our calendar is untrustworthy. You really don't know what year we're in on our calendar. Okay, they say 2017, but it's really uncertain. The Jewish calendar, which I hope is really off, but maybe not, is like 5,700 and something, and that, that's discouraging, but then Snebelin said they're missing 200 years in there somewhere also, so good for that. So, I, you know, you really don't, I don't know where to get a good calendar system. I've been trying to find a book. I called Brother Donovan two or three times. We can't make connections, see if he knows of a book, uh, to try to understand the calendar system because our calendar is all goofy. And so a lot of times people try to set things according to our calendar, and you can't trust our calendar. It's been messed with through the years. So I don't know if, we're ever, if God's going to give us an answer, and that's part of his plan to keep things kind of secret. So that's Daniel. Okay, so we got pretty much Daniel. Daniel typifies the Holy Ghost in chapter 5. I went through that last Thursday, so I don't want to repeat all that. Let's go on to Hosea. Hosea, can you see? Hosea starts uh, 12 minor prophets. So it's 12 minor prophets in a row. And the only reason they're called minor is because they have shorter books. Except for Hosea, his has more chapters than Daniel. Now, a lot of times when we read through these books, okay, if you have a good reference Bible, if you go to the back, there's a very good map in the back, okay? And when we think of Israel and Judah, in our mindset, we're thinking of very large nations, okay? When the United States is a very large nation, but remember Israel is one-fourth the size of Indiana. Okay, so if you take Indiana from, let's see, from exit 220 down there, go up to the Michigan, and go all the way across, and then switch it this way, that's Israel. Very small. So we tend to think, okay, these guys really didn't know each other much, but it would be no difference than somebody, okay, preaching over here in Lowell versus somebody in South Bend. Again, if you've got to switch it north and south. Okay, if you do have maps in the back of your Bible... Okay, I'm, I'm looking at the fourth one I had and put in... A, in the uh, fifth one, general location of the tribes of Israel. You'll see down in the bottom right, if you've got a good reference Bible, okay, uh, it's 40 miles approximately in width from the Jordan River up. You can see that it kind of curves at the bottom, maybe 50, 60 miles, and curves and goes up to the top by Naphtali or Dan to be about 30 miles across, very thin, but about 150 miles north and south. So if you're looking at Jerusalem, that's where, that's where um, Jeremiah was. And then Hosea, Hosea prophesied, he was a contemporary uh, with Isaiah and Micah. 
Isaiah and Micah was in Judah, so that's down by Jerusalem, or you see where it says Judah, that was a nation. And then if you go up north, that's where Hosea was, so they were probably no more than 80 miles apart. So it's very close. See, he was in the northern part, so you've got Judah at the bottom, Judah and, and Simeon, Okay, but actually around just where it says Benjamin, that south basically becomes the border for Judah, the northern border, and anything north of that's the ten northern tribes of Israel. So it's a very, very small nation. So it's, it's not surprising that these guys had contact. So the book of Hosea. Okay, now the only reason they're generally in, a, in an outline thing is called Minor Prophets is because they're smaller books. But these guys were just, they just lived like anybody else lived. Like Amos, he had an orchard. He had an orchard and he had some animals, sheep, and he was a herdman. And so he's out there just living his life <clears throat> like a herdman. Maybe he, on occasion, gets down to the synagogue or the Jewish temple when they have to follow their little structures once in a while. And then while he's out there watching the sheep, the Lord says, hey, I want you to go tell so-and-so something. Okay. So he just gets up and walks over to so-and-so, a, 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 you know, some political figurehead, walks in the judge's chamber or walks into his political office, and he says, thus saith the Lord. And then leaves. And then that guy sits there burned about it. Okay, and so that's the procedure. It's nothing big. It's not a big deal. It's not mystical. It's no different than you and I going and talking to somebody. But a lot of times we, we tend to forget. We think the bigness of it is that, oh, these guys are big. They're no different than you and I. None whatsoever. Now, Hosea, he prophesied for about 60 years. So he stayed in that general, very small location for 60 years. And God gave him 14 chapters. Okay, so 14 chapters is what he actually had written. So all that little small information in that 60-year time span. While he was doing that up north... Isaiah was doing the same down south. And Micah. So you got Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah. So he was doing it down south also. So they had two of them down there. Jeremiah and uh, Michael, or Isaiah and Michael. Now they were doing this about 785 to 725 B.C. And if you know your history, 722 is when the Assyrians came in and conquered the northern tribes. So they were giving, he was the last warning to the northern tribes. Stop it. Stop doing what you're doing. Get right with God. The Assyrians are right over there just east of us. They're coming in and they're going to wipe you people out. And they didn't listen to him. And he had Hosea uh, live a life as an example to the Israelites. Now, it's not what you would consider an example that anybody would desire. Okay, these guys lived their lives as an illustration to people. So, what was he told to do? Aren't you glad you don't have this calling? Hosea chapter 1, the word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beeri, and then in the days of Uzziah, Joseph, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah, so that's down south, but he's up north, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. And Hosea said, What? Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I want you to do. You, you got to be kidding. What's the original Hebrew say? It can't say what you're telling me to do. He said, Yeah, go down to the, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the uh, red light district. 
Lord, I've never been down there. Yeah, go on down there. Just go on down there. Pass out a few tracks down there. Well, if you're going to tell me to pass out tracks down there, I'll do that. He said, well, get one of them gals. You've got to be kidding me. That's what he told him to do. Isn't that what he said? He didn't say, take a fine girl and she's going to turn into that. Okay, and that's going to be quite an illustration. So, uh, <laughs> strange. And all the guys in the schools of the prophets, when they heard what Hosea did, they said, oh, he's disbanded from the ministry. God can't use a guy like him anymore. But this is what God told Hosea to do. So he marries Gomer. That's a romantic name. And they have three children. Okay, so they're three children. Are they his children? I, you would have to, I don't know. Okay, but it appears to be his children. And he's got their names. Their names are used as uh, evidence or pictures to the Israelites. Okay, verse 6, a daughter, Lo Ruama. You don't hear that name much anymore at all. Okay, and then verse 8. Okay, oh, that's, a, that's the same one. Okay, let's see. And then there's Loami, so he likes to stay with the same letters like some parents do. Okay, and so you got two or three kids in there. Let's see, where's another one? Take your brother Ami and your sisters, chapter 2, verse 2. Okay, so, pardon me? Verse 4, call his name Jezreel. Okay, so you got three kids. And he said, this is who you are to marry. And maybe in his mindset, he's going to think, well, maybe she just, she, maybe she had a bad upbringing and I could help her grow in the Lord and be a good testimony to her. And when she sees true love uh, from the Lord, then it will help straighten up her life. Not... Not in this case. What did she do? She kept acting the way. And I'm sure all the brethren would say, Hosea, you need to go to marriage counseling. And they say, Hosea, you know, you obviously aren't loving her properly. Hosea, you shouldn't have married her. Yeah, but the Lord told me to. And so she's off running back to the red light district. And what did he do? Chapter 2, he got the kids involved. And he said, go tell mama to come back home. Please come back home. Okay, that's what he did. Okay, and the picture is, this is what Israel did to God. Multiple times. And God would send a prophet and say, please come back. Please come back. I will forgive you. Please come back. After multiple times, judges and all that stuff. And uh, so he would say, I promise you we'll get everything worked out, blah, blah, blah. You know, the kids involved. And she wouldn't do it. Okay, chapter 2, verse 2. He said, plead with your mother, plead, for she is not my wife. So, Hosea, he lived his life as an outward illustration to everybody in Israel or the people in Israel who saw his life. So again, it's just, you know, you're talking a landmass of a very small area because Israel is a very small nation. And it reveals the effort that God goes to to try to pull Israel back to him. A merciful God. Hosea is revealing the effort to try to maintain a marriage in this bad situation. Okay, and Gomer has been absolutely unfaithful in marriage on multiple occasions. He begged her to come back. She never displayed any repentance and continually lived that life, even though he continually sought the restoration until God gave up. Now, how long that is? You know, that's where a person has to know between God. Okay, as far as trying to bring her back. So he had, 
you know, every right according to Mosaic law just to throw in the towel and start anew, start afresh, but he didn't. Because that's what God was trying to do with Israel. He was a picture to Israel. To that the Lord was trying to draw them back. Now, in, in this book, Israel and Ephraim are kind of used interchangeable. Ephraim was one of the largest Jewish tribes of the 12. But Ephraim got so large that there were times where God would use Israel and Ephraim you know, back and forth synonymously. So in Hosea, he's the one that does that. Now remember Ephraim, what religion claims to come from Ephraim is the Mormons. Okay, and so I'm going to run through several of the passages for Ephraim. Okay, uh, let's try Isaiah first. Isaiah 7 verse 8. And then you can look, at, and the, if you remember these, jot these two, three verses down. And if you happen to deal with a couple of Mormon boys, ask them the question, what tribe are you from? They'll tell you Ephraim. I've done this several times. And, and don't, don't tell them they're not. Let them dig their hole. Then show them Isaiah 7, verse 8. The head of Syria, Syria is Damascus. The head of Damascus is resin. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. Okay, so 65 years. Look at the date. Okay, the date's about 750 B.C. According to Isaiah, within 65 years, Ephraim shall not be a people. Now that technically is a reference to all ten northern tribes, but yet Ephraim is the word used. Okay, 100 years later, Jeremiah chapter... 7, verse 15. 100 years later, okay, Isaiah said, in three score and five people, six year, three score and six year, five years, 65 years, Ephraim shall not be a people. 100 years later, Jeremiah said, Jeremiah 7, 15, and I will cast you out of my sight, Judah, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. So they're gone. Now let's go to Hosea. Now Hosea, remember, was contemporary with Isaiah. So he's warning about this Ephraim thing. And you run all the Ephraim past to Hosea, and it is not good. Hosea 4, verse 7. And read these to the, book, the little elder boys. Now watch their eyes go. Their circuit breakers go. Okay, Hosea 4, 7 to Ephraim is joined to idols. Let them alone. Hosea 4, 17. Hosea 5, verse 5. The pride of Israel doth testify to his face. Therefore shall Israel and Ephraim fall in their iniquity. There you can see is Israel and Ephraim, so the tribes included there. 5, verse 9. Ephraim shall be desolate in the day of rebuke. Hosea 7, verse 8. This is one of my favorite. I like to show this one to the Mormon boys. Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. I like that one. And I ask him, do you know what that is? And they said, no. I said, it means you're half baked. And then their eyes go. Kum, 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 kum. Okay, that one's kind of entertaining. Uh, Hosea 7, 11. Uh, that's a good convenience store one. Uh, Ephraim also is a silly dove. Without heart. Boy, that's quite a comment. Hosea 11, verse 12. Ephraim compass, compass me about with lies in the house of Israel with deceit. That's not real uplifting. Chapter 12, verse 1. Ephraim feedeth on wind. What's that? They're full of hot air. And then when you go to the New Testament, type in the word Ephraim, it shows up one time, and it's a town called Ephraim. Ephraim's gone. It's missing in Revelation 7. It's out of there. I mean, can you imagine the ratio, the gambling ratio, that you pick one out of 12 tribes, and you pick the one that's gone? And Joe Smith didn't pick that up with his magical goggles when uh, Angel Mor Moron came and showed him about the golden plates? 
Okay, and so that's the bizarre thing. When a guy messes with the book, God messes with their brain. And they go bonkers. So Hosea reveals Ephraim's sin. Hosea chapter 8, verse 12. I have written to him the great things of my law, but they are counted as a strange thing. The Bible was strange to them. Okay, and probably one of the two most popular verses, Hosea 4, verse 6. I'm sure many of you have seen at least the first statement of this verse, but they don't read the second part. Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. How many times have you seen that verse? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They need knowledge. Give them knowledge. Yeah, but keep reading. They had the opportunity. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. They don't, I rarely, I'll see that first phrase 10 to 1 to the second phrase, if not higher. Because the second phrase puts the blame on them. The first phrase, if you just read the first phrase, oh, they're victims, they don't know better, oh, they could, oh, they're poor people. No, they were actually responsible for it. So Hosea's up north, uh, and then Daniel, he was taken captive later. Uh, Jeremiah's down south, Isaiah's down south. Isaiah, Michael, and Hosea were all contemporaries, those three. And they were about... About 100 years before Jeremiah and Daniel and his three buddies. Okay, so that's uh, those two. Let's stop there and let's pray. Lord, I do pray and ask you to help us to um, have a, a searching heart for thy word, that we might be inquisitive to thy word, that we might desire thy word, that we might seek after thy word, that uh, this, these previews would just kind of spark our curiosity that we might uh, search your scriptures, be faithful to them in Jesus' name. Amen.